We're about to start another wonderful weekend and we give thanks for life and the privilege to be called Jamaicans. You're inside Jamaica Magazine, I'm Adrian Atkinson. On today's pages, plans for the agricultural sector this fiscal year and... Bill to one, hundred dollar for one, any DVD, any CD. Do you have the right to copy that CD or book? We talk intellectual property later in the show. Stay with us. All that and so much more starting right now. Parents, make sure the children get immunized. Hear this. Immunization, it is a must. This is not a joke thing, this you can trust. It is required by law for entry to nursery, to daycare, and to schools. Listen up, it is necessary to prevent diseases such as the measles, the poliomyelitis, the locked jaw, and the whooping cough. Immunize your kids, keep them healthy, keep them strong. Prevent deadly diseases such as mumps, rubella, and diphtheria. Immunize your child today. Immunization, a key to good health. A message from the Ministry of Health and PAHO. Good day, I'm Carrie Ann Smith, and this is your GIS News for Friday, April 24. China Harbor Engineering Company Czech is moving ahead with its plans to develop lands along the North South Highway Corridor. The development of the 1,200 acres of land is part of the agreement between the government and Czech for the highway construction, which is now two thirds complete. During a sectoral presentation Tuesday, Transport and Works Minister Dr. Omar Davies said the Chinese company had presented government with plans to develop parts of the land. The proposed developments include, in the first instance, the construction of three luxury hotels with 2,400 rooms, as well as nearly 600,000. Dr. Davies added that expenditure on the highway project and developments along the corridor would be well in excess of 1 billion US dollars initially. The minister also addressed concerns about Czech's alleged withdrawal from Jamaica, saying he put the matter to the company's manager for the Caribbean, Central America and the Americas. I repeated the question to, to him, are you winding down operations in Jamaica? And he said it would be a strange form of winding down when Czech is about to complete an apartment complex, when their plans to build 2,400 hotel rooms are being finalized, and when they are working on plans for developing the rest of land to be provided. Dr. Davies said Czech was actively seeking other opportunities for investment in the medium term. Jamaica has significantly improved its processing of construction permits. The country's ranking for dealing with construction permits has moved up from number 52 to 26 in the 2015 World Bank Doing Business Report. Local Government and Community Development Minister Noel R. Scott adds that 78.6% of the over 4,800 building applications received last year were approved in 90 days. In the last quarter of 2014, Mr. Speaker, 1,048 applications valued at 12.3 billion were received for building per permits by the local authorities. 93.4% valued at over 10 billion were approved. And of this, 873 were approved within 90 days. Minister R. Scott was making his contribution to the sectoral debate in Parliament on Wednesday. He also announced that local authorities exceeded targeted property tax revenues in the 2014-2015 fiscal year by collecting approximately $7.4 billion. As a result, communities governed by top-performing parish councils will benefit from the installation of 500 LED or solar streetlights this year. These are in the parishes of Kingston, St. Andrew, Portmore, Hanover, St. James, St. Mary and Westmoreland. The Kingston and St. Andrew Corporation which had the highest property tax collection rate, will also get $5 million to execute special projects. There has been a marked increase in the number of arrests for agricultural theft since the appointment of the Pradia Larsen unit in March of this year. Agriculture and Fisheries Minister Derek Kelly made that announcement during his recent sectoral presentation and said the strategy would be further supported by amendments to critical pieces of legislation. We will be presenting to Cabinet shortly proposal for increasing fines under the Agricultural Produce Act. And similarly, we have asked the Ministry of National Security to initiate the same in respect of the Pradial Last Prevention Act. 
Among other things, the proposed amendments to the Agricultural Produce Act will strengthen the National Animal Identification and Traceability System. We are going to simplify and activate the provisions for all handlers of agricultural produce. From here on, we will see an intensification of operations by the police, and this will be a sustained operation. The Ministry of Labor and Social Security is reporting that the National Insurance Fund, NIF, is far from being insolvent. Portfolio Minister Derek Kelly says the current assets of the fund stands at $71.2 billion, 5% more than the balance in March last year. But he says there is a gap between contributions to the National Insurance Scheme and what was paid out in benefits. The minister says the recommendation of the actuaries who completed their study on the NIF are being reviewed by a committee appointed by Cabinet. Once this committee has completed its work, its findings will be forwarded to the Cabinet for a decision to be made on the level of contribution and benefits rates that will be required to ensure the continued viability of the National Investment Fund. Minister Kelly was making a sectoral presentation in Parliament on Tuesday. He said the NIF had increased its individual loan limit to borrowers from $5 million to $30 million to stimulate job creation and opportunities for skilled workers. The loan limit to small and medium-sized enterprises also increased from $1 billion to $1.5 billion. Improvement to education delivery in the region is one of the main agreements coming out of the 7th Summit of the Americas held in Panama City April 10 to 11. Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade Senator A.J. Nicholson says the implementation of projects will be supported by various organizations. These will be implemented in collaboration with the various inter-American institutions and multilateral financial institutions. Among the proposals was the establishment of an inter-American education system to improve the quality of education in this hemisphere. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Carrie Ann Smith. Thanks for watching. Nutritious food, succulent dishes, superior workmanship, and excellent service. Jamaica is on the go. Let's grow what we eat and eat what we grow. Let's harness the indomitable spirit of our most valued resource, our people. Let's support our local businesses. After all, buying Jamaica means building Jamaica. Nugget. Original. For the first half of 2014, the agriculture sector grew by 15.2%. And throughout the year, the government, farmers and other stakeholders joined forces to cut Jamaica's multi-billion dollar food import bill by 4.5%. That works out to $5 billion in savings. That's right, the Eat What We Grow, Grow What We Eat campaign is reaping results. And in this fiscal year, the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries will continue to increase food production through the AgriParks initiative. For the 2015-2016 year, we project the involvement of over 300 more farmers, five major buyers, and the establishment of 120 hectares, yielding some 2,400 tons, or 20% of the imports. But that's not all. Infrastructure works like roads and drains will also be completed at three of the nine agro-parks, Ebony Park Clarendon, Yala St. Thomas and New Forest Dove House in Manchester. And a new water supply system will be constructed in Hill Run, St. Catherine. We are to extend the Hanslow irrigation system and construct farm roads to complement the packing house and the pepper mash facility already established there to make this also a new agro-park. Four, we will install an irrigation system at Spring Ground in St. Elizabeth to engage over 80 hectares, some 200 acres of land for a new agro-park. We'll commence production activities in the non-such unity agro-park in St. Mary, where there is now an overwhelming demand for lands to engage in export banana, cocoa, and coconut production. And even as the government works with established farmers to replenish the country's bread basket, the younger ones are learning the basics. Through the Science and Environmental Club at Waterford High, many farmers and young innovators are using newspaper and plastic bottles to grow plants. It's a very good training ground for future leaders in the field.
Welcome to another week of School Zone. I'm Tamara. Growing plants without using soil? Is that even possible? Well, on today's program, find out how the Waterford High School Science and Environmental Club is making all this possible. Let me tell you about hydroponics. Let me tell you about hydroponics. It started in Waterford, Waterford High, when littering, yes, it reached the sky. So we recycle plastic bottle and paper for make we farm in a bit greater. But wait, it not done when we recycle, yes, we have fun. Gather with tools and equipment, link up everybody, principal, classmates, staff and friends. That's why me say, give me water and give me paper. Pass the bottle, cow a ton farmer. And put in the seed with the fertilizer. Make sure they clean. We don't want to dirt ya. Hydroponics, and that are the mix. That's where the soil, it is a quick fix. No land space, but a agriculture. We have the community of Waterford is sometimes viewed as a troubled inner city area. Yet the sheer creativity of the Waterford High School students is a wonderful example of blooming where you're planted. Their award-winning hydroponics farm captured the eyes of School Zone. So how did this project get started? Littering was a major problem at Waterford High School. We started to recycle plastic bottles and the papers as one of our major projects. Now, as an entry to the UDC competition, we started to do hydroponic farming. This was introduced to me by my brother, Damian Elton, and he told me that this is a great way to get children involved in recycling. So the project is called Urban Hydroponic Farming, using recycled plastic bottles and papers. Talk about turning trash to treasure. But how does hydroponics really work? Hydroponics is the use of um, growing plants without the use of soil. What we do, we use water and nutrients. At Waterford High School, as a framework, we use plastic bottles and a paper. We use the papers because it holds the water. When we add the nutrients, it holds the water. The students of the Science and Environmental Club who operate the project were in high spirits when School Zone visited sharing with us how the project has benefited them and is helping them to be more environmentally aware. I feel very enthused about my club having this project because we have contributed a lot to our school. Well, the canteen at our school can get scraps from it to use to cook food for us at Waterford High School. And it reduces the pollution of plastic bottles in our environment. I feel great about it. It's so fun. Why is it so fun? Because we get to plant and I love plants. It, it is very interesting and it, 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 is, um, it is ozone friendly because you can use a plastic bottle in, in variety of uh, different ways to, to conserve the environment from being polluted by plastic bottles. I jump on it. Mm, I jump on it. Yes, yes, a long time. Warm up the dirt. I jump on it water. Four that are work. Short a land space. Get pocket and pee up. Seed with fertilizer. Hey, great up. Crops from the bountiful butted farm are many, including callaloo, pak choy, lettuce, tomatoes, and more. And these veggies are being put to good use. In March, we got a lot of sweet peppers and peppers to offer some to the canteen, and the students brought home some. Don't let um, land space be a problem because you can set up a simple structure in your home, on your veranda, at the back of your house, um, simply by using plastic bottles and paper. So don't make a land space be a problem for you not to farm. The project has been an entrant in a number of competitions to date including the Sajikor Visionary Competition and the Earth Day Competition. In May 2013, it was awarded first place in the Urban Development Corporation Helsha Environmental Competition, and the Waterford team members are high off their winning streak. We are really, really, really excited about winning. We deserve it. We do a lot of work. Um, we know that we are number one, excellence always, and the students are very excited and very um, into hydroponic right now. To say that we are excited and happy is an understatement. We are really very, very proud of our young scientists. They have put our school on the map again, and they have made us, as a school family, really, really very happy and excited. They have lived up to our motto, excellence always, and we are proud of them. Great work being done by the Waterford High School Science and Environmental Club. 
their hydroponics farm, which is definitely impacting the environment in a very positive way. For School Zone, I'm Tamara McHale. Artists, dancers, songwriters, protect your work from copycats and secure your intellectual property. The intellectual property rights law guards the rights of owners of creative works in the scientific, industrial, literary, artistic, musical and dramatic fields. It covers several areas. Protect your net worth. Protect your legacy. Build Jamaica's creative and industrial industry. For more details on protecting your creative expression, contact the Jamaica Intellectual Property Office. We love our movies, music and all things entertainment, but we have to watch or listen to them legally. As we commemorate Intellectual Property Week, watch this, then decide if you have the right to that copy. Bill to one, hundred dollar for one, any DVD, any CD. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, Hi. yes, Good yes, man. Yeah, 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 all in a bid to make quick cash and satisfy the appetite of music and movie lovers. But how important is it to observe copyright and other intellectual property rights? The Jamaica Intellectual Property Office, JIPO, is the agency in charge of protecting the original creations of the mind. For example, poetry, signs, fashion, and logos. You get the picture. But before we get into all that, let's start off with copyright. Well, copyright is one type of intellectual property right, which is all about protecting original creative expressions. Mm -hmm. And copyright applies to works that are of a literary, artistic, mm -hmm. musical, or dramatic nature. By literary, we mean stories and poems, but also lyrics of songs. Mm -hmm. By musical, we mean uh, music composition, the melody, the rhythm. By dramatic, we mean a choreographed dance or a mime. And by artistic, we mean photographs or paintings or sculptures or maps even. Copyright holders are protected under the Copyright Act of 1993. Under the International Treaty for Copyright Protection, Jamaicans are protected in at least 160 countries. Now, once the work is in its original written or recorded form, it doesn't have to be registered for the owner to own the right of the copy. It should, however, have this symbol along with the author's name and the date of creation. You can also keep a copy of your work by sending a registered mail to yourself through a local post office. When the mail arrives, keep it in a safe place. It may be used as proof in a court of law. Let's go with something that seems to resonate with everybody. Is it okay for me to copy or should I say burn a CD or a DVD for sale? Well, if you have created the content on the CD, if you wrote the music or, or the lyrics, or you have filmed the movie, mm -hmm. then if you're the owner of the content, then you can do with it as you wish. Yeah, but naturally. If, <laughs> if all you have done is purchase the CD or the DVD, mm -hmm. you are allowed to make a copy for your private or domestic use. But if you're going to make copies that are in commercial quantities, mm -hmm. if you're going to be using the work in a way that takes away from the economic rights of the copyright owner, then that is a no-no under the law. A copyright holder still has his or her title 50 years after death, so the economic benefit can be passed on to their heirs or anyone they wish. After 50 years, it goes into what we call the public domain, mm -hmm. which means that anyone would be able to use the work, refer to the work, adapt the work, without having to get your permission mm -hmm. as the owner of the work or having to pay any license or royalties for the use of the work. 
A trademark is simply a symbol which distinguishes one commercial entity from another. But it's not limited to those offering goods. The service industry is also accounted for. For example, Etana mm -hmm. is a registered trademark. And not only entertainers, but celebrities mm -hmm. can also register trademarks. So Usain Bolt mm -hmm. has tr several trademarks with our office, mm -hmm. with him doing the To The World pose, mm -hmm. with his name, with various derivatives of his name, such as Bolt To The World uh -huh. or Lightning Bolt. Trademarks can be protected for 10 years, but it's renewable as long as the business continues to operate. So does that mean I'm not allowed to use any of these trademarks or logos, so to speak? Without their permission. And that's the nature of intellectual property rights. It, otherwise, it's in contravention of the law and the owner could sue mm -hmm. or criminal action could be taken against those persons. Earlier in 2010, two Chinese nationals were arrested and charged for breaches of the Trademarks Act due to bootleg cigarettes and other goods. What about Pasa Pasa? That's a registered trademark and some other examples of trademarks that have been filed with our office include Kuya, Jamekia, Relop, Zion Roots, uh, Yuzimi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so persons are using our Jamaican parlance and applying it to the various goods or services that they are offering and they can be filed here as registered trademarks. If you want to protect the original creations of your mind, contact Jaipo at 18 Trafalgar Road, Kingston 10 or give them a call at 946-1300. Musicians, users of music instruments, if you're a registered member of the Jamaica Federation of Musicians or the Recording Industry of Jamaica, you may apply for a waiver of duty on the importation of music equipment. You'll need to submit the following, a letter of request to the Film Commission or Creative Industries Unit and a pro forma invoice detailing the items being imported with corresponding serial numbers and costs. Jamaica Promotions Corporation Jampro will submit the documents to the Ministry of Finance for approval. You must get approval before the items arrive. For more information on the Music Tools of Trade Incentive, click on the Tourism and Entertainment Ministry's website at mot.gov.jm or call the Ministry's Entertainment Division at 920-4926-30. Consolidation. The centerpiece of the program has been the need to reduce our debt. Business reform. Make sure that we transform Jamaica to make it a place to do business easily. New and existing businesses will benefit from streamlined regulations and processes. And pursuing strategic investments while protecting the most vulnerable. The path we're on is the right path. The economy in Jamaica is turning. The fact that the international community is once again lending to Jamaica says something about their confidence in our policies. It is now time to actually stay the course, not to lose the benefits of the hard decisions that have been made. The Jamaican government is committed to continuing the process of reform. The government of Jamaica is on a mission, going for growth, staying the course and transforming the economy through its economic reform program. Under Jamaica's economic reform program, the country continues to make headway in a number of areas. Let's listen to some good news from the local government and community development minister as he made his contribution to the sectoral debates in parliament on Wednesday. Mr. Speaker, I want to give this all some information. Jamaica's ranking has significantly improved in the World Bank's Doing Business report. We moved from 94 to 58 of 189 countries in the world. And if you examine the report, 
the area dealing with construction permits. We have moved from 52 in the 2014 report to 26. Significant movement is this. In the last quarter of 2014, Mr. Speaker, 1,048 applications valued at 12.3 billion were received for building per permits by the local authorities. 93.4% or 979 valued at over 10 billion were approved. Let me say it again. 93.4% valued at over 10 billion were approved. And of this, 873 were approved within 90 days. And for all of 2014, 78.6% of the over 4,800 building applications received were approved in 90 days. We have successfully completed the installation of the Amanda system in all local authorities. You know what's Amanda? The application management and data automation. In other words, we have computerized the process of building approvals. Now, we have faster turnaround. We are encouraging persons to now move on to, instead of your big blueprints, you can now digitize your building approval programs. So therefore, we'll have a faster turnaround even still. Mr. Speaker, this system will in fact facilitate further growth and development in our economy. And that's it for this Friday's edition of Jamaica Magazine. Thanks for staying with us. Catch us again tomorrow on this station. And if online news is more your speed, catch us at your leisure at gis.gov.jm, our YouTube channel, or on our other social media platforms. I'm Adrian Atkinson, and this has been Jamaica Magazine. Have yourselves a great weekend. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.